I think it's passion and I think it's kind of, it's, it's a desire to achieve the system you've dreamt of. I farm with my partner Emily. We farm 75 acres of our own and then we rent the farm we're currently standing on and the farm next door all up. It's about 400 acres. On the farm we have cows, pigs, chickens, sheep. We grow arable crops, both modern varieties for our feed and we also grow heritage varieties that go for milling. Um, we've got a brewery on the farm and we've got a butchery so we add value to the products we produce and then the waste from the brewery also goes back to feed the pigs, which is nice. We also grow vegetables and fruit. We aim to have as many interlinking relationships on the farm. So the cattle will go into a field when the grass is nice and long and graze it off. Then we'll have a four to six week break and then the sheep will go in and graze off the nice, rich, lush grass. And then the chickens might follow on after that. And then we might follow on with the pigs after that and the pigs will kind of churn it all up and then we might plant a new herbal lay that under sowed it under an arable silage. Then we'll take the silage off and that will feed the cows and then the cow's manure will go back on the field and fertilise it. So everything kind of feeds into the next thing. Now we're seven years down the line, I'm definitely trying to make changes to make things easier. So we're trying to streamline the pig operation, look at kind of setting up paddocks that have multiple moves within the same paddock. So you'll set it up once, but then the pigs will be self-sufficient there for the following six months, as long as you open little electric fence gateways and close other gateways. Trying to maintain the complexity of the system whilst trying to find a better work-life balance by being, I guess, more intelligent about how you go about doing things and also having the right equipment for the right job because equipment is fundamentally important. I guess the holy grail of what we're trying to achieve is having a fully closed loop system where we produce all our own feed. We've got like an area of agroforestry which we hope will provide us all our fuel for heating the house. And we run our processing buildings on a biomass system and we generate most of our electricity as well. I think in a perfect world, you'd find different people that want to run all the different enterprises. So you'd have someone that does the pigs and someone that does the cows and someone that does the sheep, and then they can specialise and achieve all the lovely synergies and ease of life through specialisation, but still have the benefits of a complex, diverse farming system. Profitability is a big thing and I think the best way to actually ensure profitability is to have added value on the farm or partner up with some people and have a cooperative. We've got the brewery and the butchery. The brewery is amazing because it produces lots of grain, like brewer's waste, that then feeds the pigs and then once the pigs have ate it, it comes out of the pigs and fertilises the land, so we're producing fertility and pork and we're hoping to set up a mushroom growing farm on our farm so that will use all our kind of waste from the farm so when we clean the grain all the random seeds that have come off the grain will go into make growing mushrooms then the mushrooms we can sell and then the mushroom blo mycelium blocks we can feed back to the cattle or the chicken and obviously the butchery is great because it adds value to the produce we produce on the farm and then it's also a great tool for kind of other farmers that need stuff butchered so we can offer that service the more businesses and things you can add and the more people, it's, it's all about the people at the end of the day, isn't it? It's the more people that come in, become part of a team, the stronger that team's going to be and the, kind of, the better the results are going to be. Building ecological resilience and therefore making your business more economically resilient is achievable in the sense that all elements of your farming practices react differently to adverse kind of weather, weather effects. If you've got microbiology that's working in the soil and you've got good fungal networks, they're going to bring the minerals to your plants and those minerals are going to then be available to the animals. Then decide to plant agroforestry, you've got these trees that are kind of deep rooted, they're, still, they're doing the same job in the summer, they're bringing water up and they're also, every autumn they're giving the soil a little treat 
especially the deciduous trees because they drop all their leaves and that becomes kind of soil carbon and then the worm life kicks off and the microbiology kicks off. So by having diversity, you create resilience because everything supports each other. The more intact the ecosystem is, whether it's the ecosystem of a pasture or the ecosystem of an agroforestry system, the more resilient it's going to be to climatic effects. So the lower the consequences are going to be of things such as droughts and floods. In turn, diversity leads on to resilience.